Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most important things for you to understand using Reaper, that's file management. File management is super important. You need to understand this so that you never lose a file and you record something, you know exactly where that's going to go. And if Reaper crashes, you know what to do, where to go to find your auto backups. Um, these are some areas where I think the Reaper's defaults are not very good and not user friendly. And so these are some of the most important things that you need to change in the preferences. We're gonna start this off by looking in Finder. This would be the same as Windows Explorer on Windows. And we're gonna look at the different hard drives that I have set up. My MacBook has the built-in hard drive. This is where all the programs go, my private documents, and my plugins are installed to this drive. Then I have this project drive. This is an external drive. So everything that I record using Reaper goes to this project drive. Next, I have a sample library. Um, this is a dedicated hard drive, just keeps everything organized. So everything that I download, contact libraries, things like that, those all go into that drive. And because I do a lot of videos, I have a dedicated hard drive just for videos. And yeah, so I'm, when I'm editing a video or uh, importing footage from my camera, it all goes onto that hard drive. You can probably see that I don't have a physical backup drive. That's because I'm using a service called Backblaze. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, but I have been using them for over two years and uh, it's been absolutely worth it. It saved my butt many times. Before that, I was using Time Machine and that was really good as well. Uh, but in the end, my big physical hard drive that I had for network storage uh, ended up dying. And then I, I've just been using the ba online backup since then. You always need some sort of backup. I'm comfortable with just using the online backup. Uh, it takes quite a long time to get everything uploaded to the cloud, uh, but once it's there, it's it's totally seamless and you don't even notice it um, until you need it, and it's been fantastic. Uh, so the next thing is something that I'd like you to set up on your system. If you go over to the users, uh, your user account, and then um, create a folder called temp. I, I do it all caps so it's easy to find. This can be pretty much anywhere. I used to recommend putting it on the desktop, but just based on the way that the operating systems actually access things that are on the desktop, um, I wouldn't recommend it anymore. Desktop is just for temporary storage and quick access, so it's not recommended to put it there. Just somewhere that you can find it easily, you will be accessing this folder um, kind of on a regular basis. Make a folder called temp, and in this folder, you need two subfolders one called backups and one called repeaks. And this is where you probably guess auto backups will be saved here and peak files will be saved here. To make this easier to find, I recommend putting a shortcut to this on the desktop. So on Mac, you go right click, make alias, and then you drag the alias to the desktop. So here, if Reaper crashes, double click temp, double click backups, and the one at the top is my most recent auto backup. So now let's look in Reaper's preferences. Preferences is in the options menu right at the bottom. And so we're gonna go to the second option in the left column called paths. Default path to save new projects. I've got this set to my uh, projects drive. And this is basically when you hit command S, what folder are you first going to see here? This isn't super important, but if you have a dedicated spot to save your projects, just choose it here. I don't do a default render path. Um, if it's empty, it's just going to use my project. And to me, that's the best, most logical place for it. So you can just leave that blank. Now, default recording path, this is for projects that are unsaved. So I've got this set up in the default path, which is the username, documents, Reaper Media. And again, that's easy to find under documents and uh, Reaper Media right here. And then this is just stuff that I've recorded without saving and in all honesty, I could probably delete all of it. You don't want everything that you want to keep in that one spot. You want to set up uh, project folders for every project. Next, this is a super important one. Check this box, store all peak caches, repeaks in alternate path. And then you choose that temp folder. So you go to browse and you find your peaks folder and then click on open. 
And peak files are just that visual waveform that you see when you record something or import a file. And without using the setting, that peak file will be right beside the original file. And so for every file, you've got two now. And putting these all in one folder means that you can easily delete anything that's old, anything that's unused. It's totally safe to delete these because Reaper just rebuilds them next time you load the project. So you don't want to have peak files from five years ago um, cluttering up your hard drive, uh, taking up space, and being backed up. Putting it in one place means that you can just go through there uh, occasionally and, and clean up that folder either manually or automatically. Moving on to the project page of preferences, at the top, we can choose a default project template. We're gonna come back to this later on today, but we will set up our auto backups here. We wanna make sure that these first two boxes are checked. So save project file references with relative path names. Um, rather than putting the specific path to a file in there, we can save this with a relative path and then as long as ever, all the files are together, you can move the entire project folder and put it somewhere else and it will still open up without uh, throwing up an error. But with that off, then it would look for the original hard drive location and you'd have to re-link all the files. So I like to have that, the uh, relative path names box checked. When overwriting your project file, rename old project to rpp-back, I like to have that on just so that you have your previous save uh, in the project folder, and it's really easy to find that one. And you're never going to have more than one of those old backups uh, in the project folder. I don't like to keep multiple versions, timestamp backup, or keep undo histories. I've never needed those things, and uh, they just clutter up the project. It's harder to find what's the most current project when there's all these timestamp files in there. It's really annoying for me, but those options are there if you need them. I like to back up every six minutes when I'm not recording, but you can also have this on when stopped or at any time. I don't save the timestamp file in the project directory. Instead, I save it to the additional directory, which again is that backups folder we set up at the beginning. So if Reaper crashes and you haven't saved, you never lose more than six minutes once you have this set up and you know exactly where to go. I can just go to my desktop, double click on temp, double click on backups, and there is my backup from 1014 today. We're gonna to go over to the media page and we're gonna check this first box here, copy imported media to project media directory. So we're gonna enable that. And that just means like, if you import a sample from your sample library drive into a project, it's gonna keep that uh, file in with the project. So it's not referencing files from other hard drives. It's just really convenient to have everything kind of in one spot. But I will show you a setting that you can use to disable that. So we're gonna go to the file menu, project settings, and on the media page, we can actually um, set this on a per project basis, whether we want to copy the files or not. So um, copy media to project path, or do not copy, or use the global preference. All my audio recording projects, like music production, I like to have it copy, but if it's a video project, I don't want to duplicate stock footage, any sort of assets that I use on a regular basis. I don't want to just keep duplicating them. So I do not copy, and I have that set in my video project template. So here's another important thing, path to save media files, and you just type in audio files, or you can type in media. This is the project media folder, and um, anything you import goes here. Anything that you record goes in here. Uh, and it's really simple to set up. This is just gonna make a folder called audio files the first time that you save a project. So every new project is going to have a folder called audio files. You don't have to set this up every single time. You can just click on this save as default project settings option here. And then um, all future projects will have this set up. Uh, we can also set up a template. So let's say we want a uh, the BPM to be instead of 120, most of our songs start at 130. So we'll just do that. Let's add in five tracks as a start and we can name them, we can color them. I'll just put in a random color like that. Um, we can set our grid to uh, whole notes. And if we wanted, we can have effects on here. We can change the inputs, all those sorts of things that can all be saved as a default template. So let's save that file 
project templates, say project as template. I'll just call this default two and save. And you go into the preferences, go to the project page, and then you just choose that default template there and apply. So now if I do a new project, it comes up looking exactly as we saved that template. So I think there's one more thing to show you here in the preferences. And if you go to audio recording page, there's the options for naming the files as you record them. I like to use the wildcard track, then a dash, then the wildcard record pass and three digits. Uh, I'm gonna close this for a second and then name this. Just name it guitar. And if we go back to the preferences, we'll see that in this example, it says guitar-001. So if you're not using this record pass wildcard, then the first uh, take will be just the name of the track. And so the second take will be uh, the track name-01, even though it's take two, and that gets really confusing. So um, I find this a lot better. The first take is labeled one, the second take is labeled two, pretty convenient. And there's a lot of other wildcards you can use. There's track, track number, tr parent track, project, record pass, different date and time options, and some computer information options if you want. To me, this is the most simple kind of streamlined way to do it. So I'm just gonna show you what a typical project looks like once you've got this system set up. You've got your project RPP file. That's your current version of the project. Then you've got the uh, RPP-back file. That's the previous time you saved. Then you've got this audio files folder and inside there's everything that you recorded or imported into the project. And then here I have some other exported files. So I know this stuff is kind of boring, but this, this stuff comes up constantly on the forums, on my Facebook group, um, in private messages, and uh, in most of the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do. This is how I set up most people uh, that are new to Reaper, or they've run into some sort of problem, like they didn't know about the auto backups, or they, they're they losing files, or you know they're getting all these errors working with files. And once you have this set up, you don't need to worry about it. It, it just works for you instead of against you. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.